Welcome back. I am Dr. Samaria M. Colbert. For those who don't know, maybe this is your first time viewing my YouTube or my podcast, however you are watching this. I am the founder of a mental health organization called Kingdom Creative Counseling. We're located downtown Greensboro, and uh, we integrate Christian uh, practices, faith-based practices into our uh, into our sessions here. I'm also a, of course, licensed therapist. <laughs> I'm a published author of close to 60 books. I'm an entrepreneur, and I give you faith-based principles to bring about lasting change. Today, we're going to talk about a really um, tough topic, um, and that is how to deal with uh, manipulation and control. Uh, I want to reference uh, or give you this disclaimer. Whenever I talk about something, I come from different veins. Again, one is the spiritual world. Uh, one is I am obviously trained and I see clients who've experienced these types of issues. And I'm someone who is anointed and I'm someone that has experienced a lot of things myself as I feel comfortable because, you know, as therapists, for those who don't know, uh, as healthcare professionals, we are trained to have uh, boundaries around our personal our professional, uh, our career, our social media goals. But the Bible also says that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And um, and so I share some of the things that I've experienced with wisdom, uh, with boundaries, <laughs> uh, with healing that I've experienced, um, but as it relates to the topic. And so uh, I always want to give that caveat because I talk about things related to power and control. I want to make this caveat that um, I have experienced not necessarily being uh, someone that is a manipulator or controlling, but I've had experiences with people in my personal life like that. And I think it's really important when we hear these concepts, even what I talked about in my last few teachings, fear of rejection, um, uh, different fear of vulnerability. It's really important to think about someone else. Don't, don't just share this with someone else. Think about within ourselves. You know, let this not be found in me. Uh, if you have experience being uh, doing relationships or family members or whomever friends that were manipulative and controlling, we also have to understand, I'm, I'm going to hit you where it hurts, that oftentimes what we allow, what we allow people, how we allow people to treat us, beloved, is a reflection of how we feel about ourselves. Ugh, I know that's hard. So again, let's, let's talk for a minute. Now, um, we're going to talk about different things that for me, for those, this is your first time tuning in. I give you a lot of information. Okay. I don't just give you 10 steps. I give you information, information. And so when we talk about the spirit of manipulation and control. We're going to talk about it from one, the spiritual world. Uh, we're going to talk about the demonic agenda, why Satan and his world uses the, uh, the spirit of manipulation and control to help us to allow us to forfeit our authority, our positions, our promises, our positions that God has put us in. He uses that spirit to cause us to subject ourselves, excuse me, to a, a lesser order, which is him. This is why people who are controlling and manipulative want you to submit to them, okay? Um, we're going to talk about types of manipulation. We're going to talk about types of control. And then we're going to talk about what you should do about it. Now, full disclaimer, I'm in between sessions right now. <laughs> and so I am more likely going to have to part two this. I may even have to part three this because I have so much information. I'm not going to be able to give it to you within the like 45 minute to an hour block that I usually try to limit it to. So I'm going to, once I hit like 45 minutes, I'm looking at my clock here. I'm going to stop and then I'm going to do part two um, at a different time. So um, so I'm going to give you that ca caveat. OK, so let's start by, by talking about this first scripture. OK, scripture. OK, ready, ready. Ephesians 6, 12. Holy Spirit, we thank you for today. Thank you for today. Thank you for the ears that will hear this uh, later on. Those who will hear it and be blessed by it. The, the point is, is healing. OK, so anyway, Ephesians 6, 12, King James Version says we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against uh, spiritual, uh, against power, rulers of darkness, excuse me, of this world and spiritual weaknesses in high places. So I messed up a little bit. Let me say it again. Ephesians 6, 12 says we fight not against flesh and blood 
okay, against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So remember this, our fight is never against a person or a people, okay? It's not. It is about a spiritual battle. This is why it's very difficult to get free from someone who's under that guise of manipulation and control because they are because it is a spiritual battle that you are fighting first. Now, let me give you this caveat. I've said this before. I am not one to dismiss people's behaviors all because you are being used by the spirit of the enemy. I don't, yeah, no. Because remember here, remember, uh, you have to submit yourself. You have to allow the enemy in your heart in some way, give it access and not work on your own deliverance so that you begin operating under that guise of control and manipulation. So I don't pacify people just because, oh, you just being led by a spirit. No, you let that spirit in and you gave that spirit access. Okay. So when I say that, I don't want you to pacify people's behavior and continue to allow yourselves for those who have been uh, survivors. I won't say victims, survivors of people who are controlling and manipulative. We're not pacifying behavior. We understand brokenness. We understand, you know, people going through things, but we're not going to pacify because it's a spirit. No, that spirit was given access. You, it was given access. And what I'll tell you later on is that oftentimes people had this behavior even though it's spiritual, because that is what works for them. The people that I can think of that were very manipulative, controlling, tried to bring me down, tried to break me. These people, that behavior, that controlling or manipulative behavior works for them. So I noticed that what it means, that means they have gone throughout their life being, being controlling and manipulative to people. And I'm not just meaning one person to multiple people and they have gotten their way. It's like a child. Like if you have a two-year-old child or a child, whomever, however old they are, and they learn that they can have tantrums and then they get their way and no person or parent comes along and breaks them of that behavior. That's what works works for them falling out crying and boohooing and, ah, and crying all out the store you know what i'm saying acting a fool works for them and so if you ever have been in, in relationships or had to break free from something that's controlling and manipulative remember you're not the first you're not the last that's what works for them it's unhealthy and it's wrong but it works for them it just don't work for you or it don't work for me right so again, let's go over what the Bible says when we talk about the spiritual bad. Look, look, look what the spiritual bad. This is why you have to be spiritually minded. You got to have a prayer life. You have to discernment. Okay. It says against principalities, which is spiritual governments. It says powers, which are ruling spirits. I'm talking good already. Uh, rulers, which are governing angels, governing angels, that governing angels. Darkness, which is, the, which is, envi which is an envious intent. It's hidden agendas. It is hidden motives. It is untruth or partial truth, not telling the whole truth, minimizing. You listen know, when you meet somebody, you know, I have a little bit of um anger, but I, I'm all past it. And then we pull you up, you we pull you up on the on the uh, on the on the website and you have uh probation charges because you have a uh a, a, a assault charge on your on your record. You understand? But you minimize. Oh, it's, I, I've, I've had a little bit of anger in my past and, and I, it's under the blood. But you got a pending charge. You still got to go to court in two months. You see what I'm saying? I'm using some crazy examples, but I'm just saying, okay? And then look what it says, high places. These are high. So high places are not necessarily places that are below. I had, a, I was listening to a woman teach years ago and she said, when you when you get ready to boot the devil, you look down because he's under your feet. No, the Bible say high places positions in authority listen to me you got to be careful about them high places okay so that means spiritual weaknesses because the scripture says in high places there's a concept called demons at the top so that means let me when god has called you to a position of authority leadership platforms you are going to be a special target because you're in a high place to demonic entities that would not have access to you otherwise. We're talking about the spirit of manipulation and control. 
Why is it important? Because we have a real enemy, not the person, the enemy. His real name is Lucifer, Satan. Lucifer has a demonic agenda to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Now, he cannot do this uh, aggressively, you understand, when you are a blood-washed believer. He can do everything but kill you, according to Job. Can't, you can, you can't, he can't kill you. He can't destroy you. He can't, he, there's certain things he just can't, he can't steal your life from you without God, because that, that's, the, that's the boundary that God set at the beginning. Look up Job, right? But he still has a motive. And I want you to hear this very quickly. God, Satan has a motive to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So how, Samaria, how does Satan do it if he cannot do it aggressively? See, if Satan really just wanted to kill you and he didn't have boundaries, according to Job 1, he just snuffed you out just like that. So how, Samaria? Through the dyes of control and manipulation. He has to get your will full permission. Satan can't steal you, but he can, if you allow, he'll get in your ear and you will relinquish your own authority to a lesser order. And that is the agenda of the spirit of manipulation, power, and control. Now, as a disclaimer, I'm actually going to write a book about this, y'all, um, because I was when I was sitting here, and I got I had so much information. I had so much information, like there's no way. So I'm going to write a book. I have had the book. I had a title and everything. Y'all pray my strength in the Lord because I have some writing projects that are so very, very important. I don't have the time to actually do them. So God is going to open up doors for me. I'm declaring that in Jesus name. Watch this. Let me, let me go. I'm going to change my notes around. I want to, I want to make this clear to men and women that when you are a Christian and you love God and you have a position and you are called to be successful or you are successful or you just have a, uh, a uh, you have um, a purpose, an agenda, a kingdom assignment, I want you to hear me very clearly. You are pray. What do you mean, Samaria? You are pray, not P-R-A-Y, P-R-E-Y, pray. What do you mean? A prey is someone that is being hunted. A prey is someone by deceptive means you causes one to be destroyed, waste away, or defrauded. So you got to be careful who you allow in your space and in, in your ear because you are prey to a predator. And let's be clear. There are men who are predators and there are women who are in predators, okay? Men who are predators and women who are predators. Now, and I say that because oftentimes, I have said that women tend to be more, uh, we tend to be more victim to predatorial behaviors from guys. And I have experienced that, but men can be preyed upon by the wrong spirit. Why? Because you have a kingdom assignment and the enemy wants to steal, to kill it and to destroy it. It's getting tight, but it's right. 
Sarita Jakes, uh, first lady Sarita Jakes, excuse me, um, back in the 90s, there's no more sheets conference. And everyone knows the infamous no more sheets conference. For those who don't know, uh, Prophets by Nina Bynum uh, preached a powerful word called no more sheets. However, um, uh, no, she is a woman at thou loose conference, excuse me. But um, a lot of people don't, didn't, uh, there's another teaching that uh, first lady Sarita Jakes began to teach and because um this other message came up that uh that was phenomenal called no more sheets uh people tended not uh, they almost like overlooked this really powerful message that uh, pastor co-pastor uh sarita jakes teach but it was very very powerful i cannot find it anywhere i used to have it years ago this is back in the i think the 90s it never came out and i gave it to a co-worker to look at it she she recorded over we had vhs's back then okay <laughs> so but the message was called pray pray, 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 P-R-A-Y, pray, P-R-E-Y, and then pray, pray, pray P-R-A-Y. She was saying how we must pray, pray, uh, pay up P-R-A-Y, because we are pray, P-R-E-Y. You understand what I'm saying? So, so, okay, that, that can get in my head of myself. So someone, watch this with a demonic agenda, whether it be conscious or subconscious. What do you mean? Because sometimes what happens is your conscious mind is you understand why you were doing what you're doing. Your subconscious mind is when the spirit is moving behind the scenes and you have no clue why your heart is, why you are doing or acting the way that you are doing. It's someone else's fault. Okay, so you can be a predator and not realize that you are being predator. You just think this is what I like. This is what I want. No, but you're a predator and you don't not even realize it. Okay, you can be preyed upon and not really realize it. Okay, so someone with a demonic agenda, even if it is unconscious, is preying on you. P-R-E-Y, you are the predator. Someone who does not have a demonic agenda, watch this, is praying for you. Someone who has a demonic agenda, let me say that again. Someone who has a demonic agenda is praying on you. Okay, P-R-E-Y, you are the predator. You are being caught through deceptive means to be entangled, to be wroth, to be uh, to be subjected, to, 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 to lose yourself. You understand? You are being preyed upon by a predator who is has a demonic agenda and they may not even know we're talking about power control and manipulation someone who is for you is praying for you and they want your best interest at heart they are praying for you they are not predatorial they are uh they are divine connection a prey p-r-e-y wants you to subject yourself to them the Bible says that Satan is a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. Devour means consume, utterly, and destroy. A predator is someone who ruthlessly, unapologetically seeks to exploit you by deceptive means. We're still talking about manipulation and control. We gotta say it again. A predator through subconscious or conscious means, last time is a subconscious, is a person operating under the spirit of manipulation and control who ruthlessly, you ever had somebody talk to you ruthlessly, unapologetically, that it's always your fault and seeks to exploit you through deceptive means. What is this deceptive means? I only want what's best for you. We are best friends. They pretend like they actually like you they want to defraud you the, that spirit it said wants you to defraud you from a place that god has rightfully placed you in hmm. i'm setting my foundation here i'm setting the stage here i want you to get what i'm saying here now i want to read here I'm going to read here a scripture and it's going to be found in Psalms. Give me one minute. Psalms chapter 36. Let's go there. It's going to read. It's going to bless your life. It's going to bless your life. Hold on. Psalm. Okay. Come on, computer. Come on, computer. Come on, computer. Just what I'm getting good. Um, give me one minute here. 
Psalms 36, starting at the first verse, we're going to talk about the New Living Translation. How much time I got? Okay. Read this, y'all. Read it. Highlight it. New Living Translation, again, Psalms 36, 1 through 4. Watch this. Sin whispers to the wicked. Deep within their hearts, they have no fear of God at all. When I say fear, they don't fear him, but they don't reverence him. So someone that's dishonorable and does not reverence the God in you or the authority that you walk in is wicked. Verse two, in their blind deceit, what is blind deceit? Deception, self-deception first. You cannot get someone to be honest with you if they're not first honest with themselves. In their blind deceit, verse two, uh, Psalms 36, they cannot see how wicked they really are. Still talk about the, the, about the spirit of, uh, of uh, manipulation control. They cannot even see how wicked they really are. They, ref, uh, they verse three, everything they say is crooked and deceitful. These are alligator tears. <laughs> but you did that. Gaslighting. But I thought we were friends. I thought you said you loved me. But if you was a real Christian, if you was a real woman, if you was a real man, they everything they say is crooked and deceitful. They refuse to act wisely or do good. Verse four, you ready? They lie awake at night, hatching sinful plots, their actions are never good and they make no attempt to turn from evil. But they still smile in your face. I love you, Samaria. I love you, John Doe. We're going to be besties. I love you. Got a knife behind their back. How they get close. Watch who you allow in your ear. Listen to this. The scripture clearly says they had such wickedness in their hearts that they actually believe that they are not doing anything wrong. It's your fault. It's your fault. We got you on tape. We got receipts with you. We got you doing what you did. We got receipts. But it ain't their fault. It's your fault. See, life is about choices. Life is about choices. You understand? It's about choices. And so when we make a choice, we then are making a choice for the consequences. You're not in control always of the choices that you make dictate your, your consequences, basically. So if if you if you do something right and it's evil, manipulative, defrauding, things like that, then you are now you are now risking yourself for the consequences of your own behavior. Someone that's manipulative controlling, they do certain things, they say certain things, they are manipulative, they, they, they control you, they gaslight you. The minute you pump the brakes, it's not their fault. They're not taking responsibility. It's your fault. All right, we're still talking good. We're still talking good. Remember, on your journey to your next, this is a test that you must pass. What do you mean, Samaria? If you read Matthew 4, 1 through 11, you read it on your own time. It states that Jesus had a conversation with the devil. He was fasting for 40 days, by the way. When he went to the four days, he met Satan on top of the mountain and had a conversation with him. This is a path that everyone who walks or is called to greatness will go in. It is the test of dealing with or having a conversation with a demonic entity. Listen to this. If you are a son of God, Satan says, turn these stones into bread. 
Then he says, if you're really the son of God, just jump off this cliff here. And the Bible does say the angels will come and, and, and build you up. Go ahead and jump. Kill yourself. If you are the son of God, everything that I have, all my access, all my connections, you'll have those connections. Just worship me. Just submit your authority, relinquish it over to me and I'll give you everything you ever wanted or desired. Hmm. So Jesus had to deal with this and he came back with them at the, by, with the word because he knew he wasn't talking to a friend. He was talking to Satan. Remember this. Someone who operates under a controlling or manipulative spirit always tests you, okay? If you're a real one, like I said, if you're a real woman, bam, if you're a real man, bam, if you're real, and they want you to prove who you are to them. Remember this from the beginning. Read Matthew 4, 1 through 11, ask God for revelation. You don't have to prove yourself to anybody. I told someone this maybe a year ago, your opinion of me does not matter because I don't have to prove to you who I am. If God delights in me and God likes me, who cares? I never understood this. Why is that people will form an opinion about you and then think that you got to listen to their opinion as if they died on the cross for your sins? You can pick up my free ebook, The Accuser. I talk about all this. So again, you don't have to prove yourself to anyone. Okay? The agenda of this spirit is to have to upsort authority over you. And again, it is to stop you from completing or fulfilling the purpose or plan God has for you. It is demonic agenda. Satan does not want us to fulfill purpose. He does not. And so, like I said, because he can't still really kill or destroy you, but that's still his desire, you know what he'll do? He'll get next to you. I'm the real one. I'm the one for you. You know, we gonna, I'm a ride or die. That's what they tell me. I'm a ride or die. Now, as stated, you are being preyed upon. We're almost in this. And then we're going to part two it, okay? I want you to point out, I want to just point out to you again, and this is by observation. This is also as well as, um, this is my role as a therapist, like certain personality types that tend to be susceptible to predatorial behaviors, okay? One, it is people who always observe you. Uh, lots of times the people, they are observing you from a distance, okay? Before they get close. You think that you just met someone, but you really didn't. They sat down and observed you from a distance. They see how you operate. They see your success. They see you move. And they have observed you from a distance. And so again, I always said people who are called to leadership position in us, and those who are already in positions of leadership, you got to watch the people that have that uh, that are in your ear. And I'm going to talk to you about the, the, the spirit of flattery down the line. Okay, down the line. This part one. Okay. If you are generally, believe it or not, I hate to say this, but I got to say it. Um, if you are a very responsible person, but if you are generally like that nice girl, nice guy, like uh, this has been my experience because I am generally, if you meet me, like I am a cool person. I'm really nice. I'm quiet. Uh, I'm, I'm a giver. Like I see me. I'm just, I'm just that person. And so sometimes when you generally are a authentic, uh, nice to the pure in heart, all things are pure you tend to, uh, you, it's almost like there's a, there's a subconscious button that pushes off into people that are controlling or manipulating because they think you're going to be easy to control. They assume you're going to be easy to control. <laughs> you, you understand what I'm saying? So if you just generally, that nice guy, that nice girl, that's very um, kind of with it. You have yourself together. Uh, you look nice <laughs> and your heart is pure. Okay. So people with a purity of heart, a purity of, of intention. You are the person that is non, you are a non-judgmental person. So that means you can see, like you're like me or we're like, we can see people, but we don't judge people in their proclivities, in their weaknesses. Like, you know, you can say, hey, I've been there. I've done that. I've, 
I've, I know what it's like. You can, you're almost like you're empathetic towards people and their situation. Oftentimes these people who kind of overlook certain behaviors and certain patterns tend to be susceptible to uh, predatorial behavior from, from predatorial people. Okay. So let's find ourselves in Titus, 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 uh, one down about the 15th verse. Okay. Uh, it says again, to reiterate my, po- po- my, my, my point here, uh, Titus 1, 15 and 16 says, everything is pure to those hearts who are pure. So it means to the pure in heart, all things are pure. That means when you have a purity of intentions and a purity of heart, you see everyone from that vein, even if they're really not pure. You're just like, oh, okay, well, you, you're you empathetic. You know what I mean? But nothing is pure to those who are corrupt and unbelieving because their minds and their consciousness are corrupted. So you see things from the purity of heart and non-judgmental. You're not putting anyone down. You can see their proclivities, but you're not judging it. And to the corrupt mind, they see everything is corrupt and everything is unbelieving. And so when you have a purity of intention and you have someone with a corrupt mind, they look at you, you pray, P-R-E-Y, you're, the, you're, you're being preyed upon, okay? Uh, verse 16 says, such people claim they know God. These are people that are predatory. They claim, claim them to know God, but the, they deny him by the way they live, by the way they live, by the way they act, by their behavior, by their, un, by their, um, by their control and manipulation of others. So you, you really can't have the Holy Spirit really down on the inside of you. And, and you can't be checked. Your behavior cannot be checked. You cannot be corrected. You think that controlling, manipulating, see, manipulating people is okay. All right. These people, they claim to know God, but they deny him by the way they act, their behavior, even the way they think. The Bible says they are detestable and disobedient, worthless for doing, for doing anything good. This is why you can't really do that with somebody that's controlling and manipulative. The Bible say they worthless. Now that ain't that Samaria. That ain't Samaria. I'm not being me. I'm just telling you what the Bible say. The Bible say that. The Bible say they worthless. Now you you take that how they want. The Bible says in um and the King James Version says of that same scripture. That's again uh, Titus 1:15 and 16. They, uh, unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. Okay. But even their mind and their conscience is defiled. So you have a period of, listen, they trying to defile you. Uh, 16, they profess, they know God, but in their works, they deny him being abominable and disobedient, disrespectful, controlling manipulative i added those two words in every unto every good work it's reprobate so every good work every good thing every good action every good purpose every good assignment every is something reprobate or something to be destroyed according to them control and manipulation i'm just setting i'm just setting my foundation here so like we said, a nice girl, a nice guy, the person with the impurity of, uh, of impurity of intentions, the person that's non-judgmental, the person that appears to have it all together. You will find people have an entitlement spirit. You have it together. You're supposed to take care of me. Entitled. They don't, they think you're supposed to fix them. On people who have, um, people who are already in positions of leadership or success. I mean, like I said, you're going to have demons at the top. You're going to be prayed toward by certain people because they they see leadership positions or people are leaders as something to be desired. It gives them a sixth sense of, of feeling of validation, of feeling important to be around important people. Someone that is having the purest of intentions is not trying to get at you to get something. Okay? People have unresolved grief or trauma from the past. Uh, control is always rooted. Remember, control is always rooted in the spirit of control, jealousy, and envy. Okay, someone that's trying to control you and manipulate you is also jealous of you and envious of you. They all, if they're like cousins, they all, they twin cousins, they all go hand in hand. So if you, I gotta say it again, someone who's trying to control you is always, always jealous of you and they are envious of you. Okay. Um, People who are people pleasers, 
okay? Watch this. Rescuers, counselors, and caretakers. Say that again. People who have a dis and I tell people you actually have to take care of, like you know your your, el- your you know your el- your elderly grandparents or parents or whomever. I'm not talking about that. Your disposition in life is to naturally be a rescuer from grown people. You want to fix people, and you think okay, rescuers, counselors, and caretakers, people who are empathetic. They have a capacity to understand or feel. Um, the vulnerability or empathize with the weaknesses of, of others. There's nothing wrong with that, but you cannot allow that empathy to cause you to be preyed upon. Trauma bonding. So trauma bonding is um, people who have gone through trauma and you think it's a connection. Oh, you went through a divorce? I went through a divorce. You, uh, you used to be abused? I used to be. And we think that that's a divine connection based upon trauma bond. Now, when you meet a divine connection, you may have similarities but the foundation of that relationship is not based upon trauma bonding, okay? Uh, we're going to part two. There's the last few things. Type of controllers are people who have a Jezebel spirit. So if you ever, I mean, men and women can have, can have a Jezebel spirit, okay? So if you ever want to understand control, manipulation, uh, study the spirit of Jezebel, broken people, people who have an unhealthy codependency. So you may want to buy the book called Codependent No More. Remember, I said these, these unhealthy coping patterns have worked for them. People who are narcissistic in nature, that's working for them. It may not be working for you, but it's working for them. And they have to get to a place where God has to, you cannot, listen, you can't do it. God has to break them of themselves. You can't do it, okay? Jealousy and people has low confidence, but they present as highly confident people. These are people that want to one-up you. They want to compete with you. They appear to be highly confident, but they're really not. Inside, they're broken, they're insecure, they have low self-confidence. They minimize their mistakes while highlight their triumphs. You know, because I have accomplished this, but, you know, they minimize the fact that they are tripping and, and they really are, you know, they minimize, you know, patterns of denial. You got to watch people who never take responsibility for their actions. They have a victim mentality. Okay, remember it's a spirit. They are proud or proudful or full of pride. Remember the Bible says God resists the proud. Okay, but he exalts the humble. All right. All right, so that's part one, y'all. So sorry. We're going to do part two. I got to go. Uh, prepare for my next session but part two how to deal with the spirit of power of of control uh manipulation um which is really deceit how to deal with the power of control and manipulation and again you can pick up my book the accuser it is free i'm going to also post another link to my other books uh, psychological warfare uh i have another book i'm going to post a link to it's called now the free one is the accuser i have another book called demon deliverance and spiritual warfare and then follow me on social media this is a book i'm going to be writing uh, and so uh, I don't know when it's going to come out because like I said, I'm crazy busy. Y'all be keeping in your prayers. Check me out, www.drsamaricobra.com. We'll be back in another day, another time, another banger, part two. All right, let's go.